He's right on the tip of my tongue. What does he look like? Bob Hoskins. Recent Google searches. Crosswords. I was stumped, so I was cheating and um, looking up with some answers. I got into crosswords from doing theatre because I was in Hamlet and I played Fortinbras. Fortinbras basically comes on stage when everybody else is dead. It was a long, long, long wait until you, you get to come on stage. And at that point, most of the dressing room's empty because they're all on stage. So you, I started to do crosswords to occupy my mind. I'm just getting the grips with the New York Times one because it's... They're kind of tricky. I mean, they, they invent their own words. I don't cry. Maybe I'm using the wrong dictionary. One of them recently had a lot to do with the Lion King, which I've never seen. I know. I've never seen it. So, uh, I guess I didn't know the characters' names and stuff like that, so I, had, I cheated and, and looked them up. Can we edit this? I had to do this thing yesterday and so some of the questions that they were asking were what would I consider to be a movie that defines Britishness? That was tricky because depending on what part of Britain you're from you could really piss people off with the answer to that question and say train spotting but of course that's Scotland and they probably aren't going to like it if you say that you're quintessentially British. So depending on what, where you come from in England it's very difficult to say what one movie is quintessentially British. But I would say that the best definition of the curse of being British was offered up by John Cleese in A Fish Called Wanda. That is that you're in constant fear of embarrassing somebody. Search a Google, I was Google searching, Craig Mazin's Chernobyl podcast. So after every episode, he would then post a podcast uh, talking about that specific episode, which I, I found really fascinating because obviously I'd had talks with Craig beforehand, but never, you, you don't have the opportunity to go into that much detail. And it's really fascinating to peer into his thought process and understand how he constructed this narrative. One of the things that people are responding to the story is there's a very clear analogy towards the climate debate that's going on at the moment and the denial of the science and the refusal to, to confront that problem. It's a masterful piece of a construction, of narrative construction. Um, so I'm fascinated by that. The holes in one's education is a very good tool for, for filling in. Google searching. <laughs>